Today, I'll turn Kaladin Stormblast from Brandon Sanderson's epic fantasy series Stormlight into a Lego midi doll. Brick emotion. Hello, Claire here. The fifth and somewhat final Stormlight book is coming out. Naturally, I wanted to reread the first four books to get my Stormlight lore up to date. I was about to start the fourth book when an urge to dollify these characters overcame me. So here we are. Obviously, there will be spoilers in here, but I will try to limit them to the first book, The Way of Kings. Proceed watching at your own peril. Oh yeah, and even though my videos are family friendly, these books are not for kids. There's way too much dying, unfair things going on, and they put other door stoppers to shame. These are chunky boys. Okay, the first thing in any Dollify project is to collect a lot of references. The character descriptions from the books are obviously the primary source here, but they are also useless to me for two reasons. First, Brando Sando does not do detailed descriptions, only one of the reasons why I love his work. And second, even if he did, I wouldn't know what to do with him. See, my brain refuses to paint me a picture from the descriptions, so I have to rely on people who do have that skill. Luckily, there are so many talented artists who create Stormlight fan and official art. Like, seriously, look at this gorgeous gorgeousness. It's just amazing that I can even choose which depiction I like the best or works best with the Lego pieces that already exist. Which brings us to step number two, picking out the most fitting mini doll parts. You might think that having collected mini doll parts for seven years for the express purpose of painting them would enable me to simply and quickly assemble the whole Stormlight cast two times over. But you would be wrong. Again, two things are in play here. Many of Sanderson's characters don't have light nougat skin, and LEGO started seriously creating non-light nougat skin tones only after I stopped collecting them. <sighs> oh well, I made an order or two or three on Bricklink and started assembling the characters. I'm planning on doing four Stormlight Dollify videos, but we'll see how this goes. I'm really bad at making promises on this channel and then not keeping them, so... Now, I have not painted a mini doll in like... four years, so I'm a bit... um... skeptical. <laughs> at this point, I don't know if I still know how to paint and if the paints I used are still liquid, as evidenced by this layer of dust on them. The pick I've chosen to base my Caledon mini doll on is named A Man's Worth by Denman Rook. I've chosen it not only because I got chills down my spine when I first saw it, but because this bridge boy outfit seems doable. Meaning it's perfect for somebody who has not painted a mini doll in four years. Keeping this outfit in mind, I found two sets of mini doll pieces that I believe could work. When I say could work, I mean the crucial places have the color I need and the rest can be painted. Selection 1 has an old Lego elf's head that could theoretically work, but it doesn't really look like Kaladin to me. The same goes for the hair. I think that's Snape's hair so I doubly don't like it for our favorite sad boy. The shirt is great, it's even the color I want Cal's shirt to be. It's of course the wrong style, but that can be fixed. And the pants are great too, just too vibrant? Maybe? Possibly? Let's look at selection number two and then decide. This version has a new face from a Lego Friends character named Louise. Apart from having a slight smile instead of a scowl, I think this face is perfect for Kaladin. So is the hair. The thing I'll refer to as a shirt brings over the vibe I'm going for, but not the style. And the pants are appropriately sad green. 
the thing I need to decide now for the whole Stormlight Dollar 5 project I have going on here is do I use the more realistic earthy tones, the vibrant ones, or something in between? The earthy tones would fit in better with the Bridgman, but the brighter colors are more minidol like and the nobility in Roshar probably wears them. So what do I do? Make the sad boy look sad, but not too sad, and allow the royalty their vibrancy? Yeah, sure, let's go with that, said she very confidently. Let's take the shirt from selection 1 and everything else from selection 2. To be honest, I had not expected to get so far with unaltered minidol pieces, but whether that's a good sign or not remains to be determined. Print removal time! The black details need to go. They are hard to cover up because black is hard to cover up and I don't need that pain or paint in my life. To remove the print, I use cotton swabs dipped in acetone, also known as nail polish remover. This takes a few minutes as I don't want to damage the minidol nor remove all the paint there is. I'm actually hoping to use the tan shirt as a base layer while painting. I also removed the smile from one of the Kaladin's heads. Please don't take anything I say in these videos out of context. I'll try to give him a more neutral, bordering on sad expression. Wow, this looks unexpectedly creepy. Moving on. Anything that will be painted needs a soap wash to remove any traces of fat that might prevent the paint from sticking to the minidol. It's only after the drying that the minidol and I are ready for painting. Or the minidol is ready and I uh, desperately hope I am too. The tan shirt is the easiest to start with. I don't need to mix any paints. I don't need to be too precise in applying the paint. It's perfect for a warm-up. While that's drying, I like to use the time to paint other body parts, like giving Cal light eyes. While waiting for the paint to dry, I sometimes get a bit carried away with the painting and I paint parts of characters that I intend to dollify in the coming weeks, which isn't that bad as I'll eventually need them, but I also sometimes get so carried away that I paint hair pieces of characters I'm unsure if I'm ever gonna get to make a dollify off. What can I say? Hair pieces are my absolute weakness. Getting back to Kaladin, whose hair I did not have to paint because it was perfect, but I did want to do something with the pants. I tried giving them a patch, as seen on the yellow pants from selection 1. It did not work. I opted for just giving him a black rope belt. I am leaving him barefooted because I believe this looks better than any sandals I could paint. They would make him look more fancy and we don't want that. When Cal's shirt is dry, I can paint on a vest. It's once again not really hard to do as there are no intricate borders and I don't even need to make it symmetrical. The thing that required skill, and I have no footage of, is painting the lips. I paint intricate details like this one by having a lamp attached to my forehead and having the mini doll centimeters away from my face. It is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to squeeze in a camera in between. So I skip the recording part. You can simply believe me that I managed to paint the perfect lips on my first try. The shirt and vest combo also gets some black details, but for the reasons mentioned a few seconds ago, there is no footage of that either. Now, this may seem like we're done with this dollify, but what would Kaladin be without Syl? He wouldn't. So, obviously, I have to make her as well. I was thoroughly tempted to make her as a mini or a micro doll, but the fact is that in our world she is schmal, so I had to make her schmal. Nano figure schmal. Obviously, I'd love it if Lego had made some nano dolls, but they haven't, and here we are.
I tried and failed to paint her windblown hair and a face, like how LEGO has done it on some of the Nanofix. That was simply way too ambitious. Oh well. I still have a nice bright light blue Nanofig and that will have to do for now. As an accessory, Kaladin obviously needs a spear. I have rifled through my weapons collections to find the perfect spear. I didn't find it. So I took the brown one and painted the tip metallic. It was only after I had painted it that I was searching for possible shard blades in the same box, mind you, and found this. The perfect spear. <sighs> Time to see what the pieces look like together. To the assembly room. First, I want to see how Cal looks when he's alone. For that, I'll use the only legs and torso pieces that I have for him and the non-smiley face. I shall take a second to show you the face up close, as I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. Good thing Lego has positioned the eyebrows in a neutral position, so a small change in lips can lead to such a big difference in expression. This is a sad boy indeed. The torso looks fine. Some of the black lines could be more crisp, and overall the design is a bit boring. But the thing is, that's what I was going for. Had I painted on more details, the shirt and vest combo would look more expensive and the whole point of a bridge boy is that he is a slave who has almost nothing. Now, I also could have made the outfit look more tattered and realistic, but then the mini doll would not look mini doll like anymore. And I want my mini dolls to, at least theoretically, fit in with the rest of the official Lego mini dolls. Therefore, I declared the sad boy Kaladin a success, but I don't want to leave him like that. I'll let Syl fly next to him and do Syl stuff. It'll make Hal want to pick up the spear and become a light-eyed, slightly happy boy. Now we can all pretend he's doing a kata with a spear and be very impressed. Oh, yeah, I leave him like this even though I absolutely adore the frowny face I made. Maybe someday, when I have way too much time on my hands, I'll create Syl in her Shreedsmar form. Until the next time you click on one fun videos, bye bye. Can you guess which other Stormlight characters I'll attempt to dollify? Two should be pretty obvious, and one is a completely personal indulgence to myself. In any case, this is a sneak peek for the next video. It's one of the obvious ones.